I'm holding in my hand an 1892 first edition of a very special book, Steps to Christ, published exactly 125 years ago by the Adventist Church co-founder, Ellen White. Steps to Christ does exactly what it says on the cover. It shares how to get to know Jesus Christ on a personal level. It's done that for me and my colleagues here in the office. Someone placed on my father's desk at school back in the 1968, a book of the Steps to Christ. And this led to his conversion. Our family, myself, we moved from being nominal Christians to dynamic Christians, where it talks about the great controversy, the great hope, and how to be disciples of Jesus Christ. So I'm very thankful and I praise God for this important message in Steps to Christ. Steps to Christ is actually the very first book that I ever read. Uh, from Mrs. White because the thing was that we had to do a Pathfinder honour and this was the little booklet they gave us and I must say I was happy because it wasn't so thick. But one of my favourite quotes is actually at the very beginning of Steps to Christ. Nature and revelation alike testify of God's love. Our Father in Heaven is the source of life, of wisdom and of joy. And I think it's so fitting that she chose to start this important book with these words, words focusing on the positives of life, of wisdom, of joy, and how God through his love is the source of all of this. One of the most influential sentences in Steps to Christ for me is this one, which says, consecrate yourself to God in the morning, make this your very first work. That sentence has uh, influenced me um, in just the way that I live my life. Once I got my, get my thoughts <laughs> coherent in the morning, it's my very first thing, just to say a word of thanks to God for a good night and giving me another morning. God does not require us to give up anything that is for our best interest to retain. In all that He does, He has the well-being of His own in view. Would that all who have not chosen Christ might realize that He has something vastly better to offer them than they are seeking for themselves. When we think about the world around us and uh, the situations that we are in now, political, economical, financial, one word comes to mind. It's uncertainty. And with this quote, Jesus promises us that he knows what is best for us and that his plans are good for us. So we don't need to worry. I was brought up in a church environment where perhaps there was more emphasis on head knowledge than on relationship. The one thought from Steps to Christ that changed that for me and has stuck with me through thick and thin is prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Steps to Christ is one of my favourite books. I have it in different versions, but the one that I perhaps use the most now is the one on my phone. My favourite chapter is the chapter on prayer, and there are two things that always encourages me. One is that it says that there's no time that is inappropriate to pray, and the other one is keep your wants, your joys, your sorrows, your cares, your fears before God. You cannot burden him, you cannot weary him, he who numbers the hairs of your head is not indifferent to the wants of his children. The first edition in Europe was published by the International Tract Society, a forerunner to the Stamber Press in 1892, and added a new significant first chapter, God's Love for Man. Since then, many more editions have been published and translated into over 150 languages. There's a note of the fly leaf of this first edition to dear Alfred from his loving mother, Jessie Bacon. September 7, 1892. I wonder what Alfred made of that gift. He must have treasured it for it to survive to 2017. For me, my favorite thought comes from chapter 8. In the matchless gift of his son, God has encircled the whole world with an atmosphere of grace as real as the air which circulates around the globe. All who choose to breathe this life-giving atmosphere will live and grow up to the stature of men and women in Christ Jesus. The book Steps to Christ had an amazing impact on Christians all around the world. Actually, thanks to this book, Ellen White is the most translated American woman author. In a simple language, it explains what Christianity is all about, in spite of the fact that God helps us to will and to act in our Christian life, there are certain steps that God cannot take for us. My favorite quote comes from chapter 9 
on the work and the life. The only way to grow in grace is to be disinterestedly doing the very work which Christ has enjoined upon us, to engage to the extent of our ability in helping and blessing those who need the help we can give them. Strength comes from exercise. Activity is the very condition of life. And then it goes on to say, thus the Christian who will not exercise his God-given powers not only fails to grow up in Christ, but he loses the strength that he already has. I think I first read Steps to Christ when I was about 14 and it completely blew me away. And although through my whole life I knew about God's love and I knew what Jesus had done for me, actually having it all there in one book and reading it in one go was so overwhelming. And I think the, the greatest thing I experienced from it was just God's love for me and his care. And I think now as the Family Ministries Director of the TD, I'm really focused on love and relationships. And it might sound quite simplistic, but actually the more we pour God's love into other relationships, I think the better the relationships will be and the better witness we have in the community. Love to Jesus will be manifested in a desire to work as he would, for the blessing and uplifting of humanity. It will lead to love tenderness and sympathy toward all the creatures of our Heavenly Father's care. The hymn What a Friend We Have in Jesus was authored by Joseph Shriven, who comes from the hometown of Banbridge, where I've recently lived. I love that song because in that song there is a line which says, bring everything to God in prayer. It reminds me of the lines and steps to Christ, where Ellen White says, bring your wants, your joys, your fears before God. You cannot weary him, you cannot burden him. And when you and I talk with the Lord, it's as if the promise is that we talk one-to-one -one exclusively. This is the same Lord who upholds universes. Thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful for your interest in me. So for me, it was very interesting to realize how the book starts and how it ends. The first chapter is about God's love for us and the last chapter of the book is about rejoicing in the Lord. So the essence of our spirituality is to enjoy in God's love and to allow God's love to change us, to be like Him, to be loving and lovely people. I'm planning to read Steps to Christ again this year. Maybe I'll pick up a few more favorite thoughts and with so many editions now available, why don't you join me in reading it through, either again or for the first time. And if there's a gem or thought that has helped you in your steps to Christ, why not write in and tell us?